Hi everyone and good afternoon and welcome to uh, this week's Behind the Wheel. Uh, my name's Simon Sullivan and I'm filling in for my colleague uh, Tom who's on holiday in sunny Florida this week. On this week's episode of Behind the Wheel, 2035 will be the end of ICE cars and Alfa Romeo turn 110 years old. And soon, you could have everything on your phone, of course. We'll tell you who correctly guessed the car we were sitting in last week. And as always, you'll have your say and guess the car we're sitting in this week. Best of luck. Camouflage versions of the new Audi A3 Quattro have also been seen in Germany and the Azores. The new model compact hatchback is also being tested on the roads in the Azores, which are felt to be a little bit more challenging, especially the Azores where they have volcanic activity and the roads are considered a thorough test for all the competition cars. The new fourth generation A3 Quattro will be the all-wheel drive with new electronic stabilisation control, a progressive steering system and brand new damper technology to improve suspension. This is another car that's due to be unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show in March next year. Mercedes has been testing the new C-Class, a rival for the BMW 3 Series, the Audi A4 and the Jaguar XE. The new C-Class has been seen out and about as it's been tested, completely camouflaged and where better than the Arctic Circle to test how it will cope with the winter conditions. The new C-Class is due to be released for sale in 2021 and it will have the same 48 volt technology that the most recent C-Class release has already been fitted with. The new model will also be built using the rear wheel drive MRA platform. Mercedes will also be introducing a new plug-in hybrid variant in the range, which they hope will have a 50 mile range on electric power alone. Smartphones are already able to do far more than they could do in the Nokia 3310 era. You can either check your bank balance, contact friends on social media, update your blog, play games and even write a novel on them. But now Apple is beta testing a new piece of tech that will enable you to unlock your car with your phone. The new Apple car key feature will enable you to unlock and start your car with your iPhone or Apple Watch, whichever you prefer. It's currently being tested as part of the latest iOS software 13.4, which was released as a beta this week. Drivers will simply need to hold their phone or Apple Watch close to the car to activate it. Do you think you'd make use of this function if you had it on your car? It's 15 years away, but the most recent announcement from the government that the sale and manufacturer in the UK of petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicles will be stopped by 2035 has come of a bit of a surprise. The climate crisis is a topic that is mentioned by so many countries across the globe now know that something has to be done. However, the most recent announcement has been received with confusion and questions by many who are concerned about how this will affect them. Following the announcement, we posted on social media and we were greeted with questions from worried drivers who felt that the announcement was unrealistic. One huge concern is how the government will go about making up for the taxes that they will lose when petrol and diesel vehicles are no longer available on the roads. The most common questions from Facebook seem to be what will happen to their existing vehicles and how they will go about charging it if they have nowhere to park their vehicles. So do you have concerns or do you believe that 15 years just isn't long enough to resolve the current infrastructure issues? With more locations setting up clean air zones or low emission zones in the coming months, the results of a recent survey from Auto Express come as little a bit of a surprise. Though they are a very clear commentary on the state of our public transport infrastructure and how drivers feel about it. In the clean air zones, where it will be necessary to pay to drive into the areas covered, the cost will vary from £8 up to £100, which is pretty steep for a daily charge. However, over 75% of those who are asked said that they would rather pay the charges than use public transport to travel. Would you rather pay to drive in a clear air zone than get the bus? At OSV, our social is really active. And if you don't follow us on Facebook or Twitter already, we would love you to join our OSV community. 
On Facebook every week we launch a poll and we would love hearing from all our viewers and followers. On Twitter we have a weekly quiz where we asked you to guess the signposts. They come from everywhere and could mean just about anything. Why not take a chance at guessing one and see if you can beat our regulars? On Sunday, we released our review on the sleek and classy Mercedes CLA Coupe. So if you want to find out more about the stylish car, be sure to watch the video. For those looking for a brief overview of the vehicle, we have a short viewing going live on the channel on Wednesday. Next week, we're looking at the practical and versatile Vauxhall Vivero van. To watch it as soon as it's live, make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss our newest reviews. If you're looking for a new car, we've got some fantastic offers right now on the new BMW M235i Grand Coupe. It's a stunning car with some incredible features that is being released in March this year. Interested? Get in touch with our vehicle specialist today and find out how we can help you get behind the wheel of a brand new BMW. In June this year, on the 24th to be exact, Alfa Romeo is going to be celebrating their 110th anniversary. To celebrate this incredible milestone, the company has designed a new logo. They will also be holding a number of events throughout the year, including something special they're arranging to take place at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Are you looking forward to see what Alfa Romeo comes up with to mark this achievement? Congratulations to Ford this week. The Ford Transit has always been a popular van and Ford kicked off the year brilliantly. The van was launched in the UK at the end of 2012 and in January the overall sales surpassed 300,000, an incredible achievement. If you're looking for a new van for your business, why not get in touch with us here at OSV and we can help. You can find our contact details in the box below. It's not even been released for sale yet, but the first car in Volkswagen's all-electric ID range is already winning awards. The ID3 has just won its second media award. The first award for the ID3 was from CarWow, who named it as the most wanted car of 2019. Last week it was presented with Best Family Car of 2020 by GQ magazine. The awards were judged by a prestigious panel and they dubbed the new ID3 a new kind of people's car. This will come as a welcome news to anyone who has pre-ordered the vehicle, which is due to be on the forecourts in the summer. It's the start of a new decade and Skoda have announced their plans for the next 10 years. Those plans include their decision to launch 30 new models in the next two years. All with the intention of achieving the goal of selling up to 2 million cars by 2030. One of the first cars that the Czech company plan to go into production is, is the Vision IN that was shown at the Delhi Auto Show at the beginning of February. Skoda plans for the Vision IN to be launched in India in 2021. They intend to take advantage of the growing car market in India and will also export the new vehicle to Mexico. At present, there are no plans to export the Vision IN to Europe. And as usual, guest it sweet's car. Well done to William Scadding, who was the first to correctly guess that we were indeed sitting in the Renault Megane Coupe during last week's episode. Don't forget to ring the bell, subscribe, get in contact about OSV's offers, check out our social channels on Facebook and Twitter, get involved in our social polls and quizzes, and of course, safe driving. Mm -hmm.